Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. We're recording in the day for perhaps the second time ever. Moshe's like, you have to get dressed. You have to get dressed. Did I say it like that? You're like, that's what you're wearing? Well, you're in your pajamas. Yeah, but I put a fur on. <laughs> and people can only see my face and neck, so who cares? It's true. You are pretty up close. I'm just saying, who cares if you don't have clothes on anymore these days? Uh, we have a, an exciting day today because we have a special guest. I would say uh, not just a great comedian and a great person, but also your primary creative partner. And a great friend. You created another period with this person. That's true. You guys did a three-season run of one of the funniest shows on television. Well, thanks, Moj. Well, you're welcome, but I'm mostly talking about the jokes that I wrote. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our guest, Ricky Lindholm. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ricky. How are you? Am I you? working? Yes. Can you hear us? Hello? Yeah, I was using my friend's little microphone thing, but it made me have no sound. So, um, you're not. You? This is where can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello, hello. Okay, we're in northern Northern California. Yeah, we're basically where we're kind of where Sasquatch lives. Oh, nice. Have you seen him? <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't. But there is a, another family that doesn't shower very much that lives here, so that's kind of similar. <laughs> I haven't showered since Saturday, but I can that's because there's that. no, there's no, yeah, I'm, but there's, there's been a power outage in my building for the last day and a half. There's an outdoor shower here and I do it every day because it's kind of the highlight <laughs> to Is take a really, no, it's like super hot. And I take like these really long showers, even though I know it's bad because like the water runs out here really easily. But I just like to like let it pour down me and just hope that no one's put a timer on how long I'm in there. Yeah, Ricky, you live in the in the heart, heart, heart of Hollywood. Maybe you should look into an outdoor shower. <laughs> be a great it's like a fun idea. way to get discovered. Yeah, <laughs> I'm actually going to check into a hotel after this because they don't know oh, when our power because of the power. Yet yeah, they said minimum the soonest it'll be is 4 p.m. And it's been since yesterday morning at like 7 a.m. And I'm like, I just need like a shower. And I don't know. I'm at the point now with quarantine and the pandemic where it's like, I can't take another thing. (laughs) You know, it's like, okay, I can, I, you know, I I can deal with life like this, but then I can't also pile on that I don't have power. Ricky, what have you been doing through the, through the pandemic? What has been your routine? I write every day. That's what I'm oh, doing. I, I, oh, she's, do- she's one of those. Oh, you're well, doing listen, the productive you're, quarantine? I mean, I don't have anything else. So you, do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm quarantining alone and it's like, it, it sort of went from feeling lonely to feeling like kind of great. I don't know. I've crossed over. Like when I used to come to your house all the time <laughs> just to like sit in your yard in like a mask. I, yeah, I've sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of good now. It's weird. I'm just fe- feeling like creative. Oh, you're saying you're kind of over that? You don't want to come over anymore and sit in the yard? I'm over I'm over my loneliness. <laughs> well, you guys are out of town, but I'm over my loneliness. So if I hear you correctly, Ricky, it sounds like you don't want to have tea in our front yard anymore. <laughs> I do once you're back. I just don't need it like I needed it before. And then let me ask you this. How much longer could you deal with this? <laughs> Not going to restaurants... I think I could go till 2022. Another full year? I could do another year of this. I think I'd get my stride. Well, you know how you said you crossed. You know how you said. (laughs) You know how you said you crossed over and now you're in a a zone of acceptance. Do you think you could cross over and again and never be able to come back? Into like total, like, like only wanting to live alone and be in a quarantine? Yeah, like the quarantine's over and you're like, I'll be in my tower writing. I don't need power either. <laughs> I, mean, I, think maybe, I think you have to get a little weird to make yourself happy during the quarantine. I think I have gotten a little weird. So maybe I could stay there permanently. I don't know. I hope not. I miss restaurants. I do too. I miss someone caring for my child. That's so crazy. It's like people have way too much time alone or way too much time together. I don't know anyone who has an ideal situation. 
like when we got our false positive tests, we were quarantined in this like Victorian house in Al- Altadena. Where's it called? Alameda. Alameda outside of the Bay Area thinking we're positive. And I'm just like letting our kid just run around the dining room because she's like been sitting in a car for six hours, you know, so I'm kind of encouraging her to like run around a little bit. And then she like you know, falls on her face and starts bleeding. And I'm just like, okay, I can deal with this positive. Now I have the coronavirus. Can I also deal with like her face bleeding for the first (laughs) time? So it's just like the quarantine just adds this level. And like, we didn't end up having, having the coronavirus, but still like everything. Or so we're telling our listeners, Ricky. (laughs) But everything piling on like that. How would you have gotten it? That would have been crazy. I have such a small pod. I would be very surprised if I got it. Wait, you you do you have a pod? I have a pod. Take us through your pod. Um, Take us through your pod. You don't have to name names, but describe the tentacles of it. So there's three people. It's my best friend from college and his boyfriend, and then a person that I'm working with. That's it. And do they have tentacles that extend outward from them? No, they don't. So it, the, the, the loop, <laughs> the loop has been closed. It's been closed. It's a closed loop. Wait, so the person you're working with doesn't have a best friend from college and his boyfriend. Nope. So that person is, that's the loneliest person in the pod. Yes. (laughs) No, but that person could hang out with the best friend. Oh, do they hang out? He's been invited. He's he's declined. I need to know more about this guy. I think think he's an introvert, you know? (laughs) This is kind of a peak era for introverts. <laughs> it it is, but it also makes me realize like I talk to mostly moms just because a lot of the people that you know, I'm looking to for like what are you doing? You know, I want to know what other people are doing with their kids, but I haven't talked to a lot of friends who have these small pods. But what are single people supposed to be doing? Oh, I don't think anybody knows what anyone's supposed to be doing. Everybody's kind of like trying their best to figure out something that won't make them go mentally insane, right? But I want a friend pod. Well, maybe you should join up with this introvert and this gay couple and Ricky. So do you think that the people who are, who are going out to restaurants in, in, in in like, they're like in maybe friend pods or some of them? I don't know. I I don't, I don't know how. That's always confusing to me. Go to restaurants. I don't know if it's, I think it's different people. Because it feels like rest outdoor dining would feel safe if you were just in your pod. If you were, if it was just pod, you know, like you were in your pod. Uh, but you mean sitting next to fifteen other pods? I don't know. <laughs> who the fuck knows? And the waiter who goes from pod to pod. <laughs> right, th- but they're lifting restrictions. I was just talking to Todd Barry, and he said in New York it feels even more dangerous because you're in these outdoor like umbrellas over you that feel like you know, like those plastic like containers around you. And it almost feels like you could get it worse (laughs) sitting in one of those after someone. Oh, it's what you get your cava, cava yatelli or whatever. Cava yatapa inside. Cava yatapa inside your incubation bubble. Yeah, inside an incubation bubble. (laughs) Yeah, I went to New York over the summer and all those restaurants were packed. Those little outdoor things. Well, you don't need to miss. You don't need to miss restaurants any longer. The stay at home order has been lifted for the state of California. Has it completely? Yeah. Today oh, okay. It did. Oh. Ricky, did you not hear? We're back. I did not hear, but I'm I'm happy in my I'm happy in my pod. I just I I just don't want to get the coronavirus. I'm just good. I just don't need it. I just don't care about restaurants enough to risk it. Well, Ricky, our experience with the coronavirus is it's not that big of a deal. You get it. And then two days later, you don't you realize you don't have it. <laughs> so if I could, oh I would God. recommend it. We were so scared. And like, I was like, oh, my God, I've given it to my daughter. It was because we went in for that burrito, <laughs> you know, because like Moshe ran in in his N95 mask to pick up two burritos. There was one other person in the burrito shop. But Moshe did say he was standing too close to him. And then my friends are texting me. And then one friend was like, yeah, I heard the new variant is even worse for kids. And so it's like. It was just horrifying. Like it was a horrifying two days because I do think there are still a lot of unknowns. Yeah, I just don't want it. Ricky, what's your work ethic? What I, you... uh, it's okay. <laughs> Ricky, what do you so, do every day? I basically, I kind of basically write from 10 to four. I, I just have, no, I have nothing else to do. I just have nothing. I like, and then like usually I'll like work out or something and then I'll like drink a glass of wine and watch a movie. But that's kind of what I do every day. I just don't have 
like, it's the weirdest thing when every other option's taken away. Like I just got like, I'm already like sort of a productive person to begin with. And this has just amplified it. It's all, it's the only thing that makes me happy. Ricky, you know, what's funny about that is that schedule that you just described doesn't seem that off to like what we did when we were writing another period or when you're working on something, right? Right. So I basically kept the same schedule. I just don't see people at night. Have you heard about the internet? (laughs) because if you want no i mean if you want something that will keep you busy and keep you distracted without having to do all that pesky (laughs) work the internet there's apparently a lot of stuff on there and Um, information yeah actually ricky i have a question now because you are a very productive person one of the most productive people i know i probably wouldn't even have had a show (laughs) on the air if it weren't for ricky because she is very productive and i am a procrastinator but how do you, and I know you've read a lot of books about how the mind works. How, how do you discipline yourself to not just like scroll through Instagram all day? How does the mind work? <laughs> like, honestly, it's, if you sit in an apartment alone for a year, you will start working. Like it's like, that is I just... not true, Ricky. <laughs> your, you, your experience is the opposite of universal. So many people are sitting in their apartments going, looking at their computer going, wait a minute. I've had nine months off and I haven't done anything. What is wrong with my brain? People who are alone though? No, I think that I, I think that your experience is somewhat unique. I think that you are uh, a productive person and so your quarantine reaction has been productivity but I think that, yeah, a lot of people are going, are going wait, I should have written five novels. That's how much time I've had off and all I did was play, you know, gears of war for a a year well here's the good news you have till 2022 that's right so now is the time (laughs) to like get it together rent an office find some sort of well i don't know what to do with kids but uh if you are alone and you feel like there's no you don't have a lot of like time sucks yeah right go to go to a go to a crowded italian restaurant (laughs) Get into a clear bubble. No, I was talking more about, you know, do the thing, like learn the G chord, do the thing that you want to do, because I think we have a good at least six to eight months left, if not a year. That's what I think. I've always wanted to write a Broadway musical. And so I'm, that's what I'm doing. And it's just like inspiring and fun and just I'd never had time before. Yeah. And you're right. Now that I think of it, everybody out there that isn't with a romantic partner right now is writing a Broadway musical. <laughs> I did just hear that. <laughs> yeah, I knew everyone was doing the same thing as me. No, Ricky, you're very inspiring. And that's why I actually really wanted you to do the show because I feel like she's Ricky's the person I turn to for advice probably the most. Ricky gives you great oh, friend okay. advice. Well, she gives me great everything advice. Nope. But I mean, she's your friend and gives you advice. (laughs) Oh, right, right, right. And Ricky, you have this great capacity like for listening. She's always she really listens to you, Um, which is interesting because she has so much energy left (laughs) for her projects. Right. But she doesn't have to listen to anyone else. That's the thing. She's (laughs) alone. (laughs) I'm I'm just a total blank. canvas. I get really excited when someone calls me. (laughs) <laughs> um okay well let's uh let's can we take a call Mosh? yeah what do you think ricky we need your uh expert advice awesome. expertise and uh let's make a call okay let's call noah in foster city what state is that in california oh there's noah oh hey guys hi noah noah what's happening it's uh happened. it is moshe kasher natasha legero from the woods and our friend ricky lindholm how are you guys doing? Good. Are you, uh, what's up with your walls? Are you a, like kind of a psychopath <laughs> or have you taken human life or like what's your... I'm a bit of a, um, I'm a sports fan. I'm from the Bay Area. And so this is... Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. So basically like in the like early 2010s when my teams were really great, I basically put up every like full page newspaper clipping that they had. And you just kept it up there for a decade? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean... You, you fill up every piece of the wall and you think, why bother taking it down? I have a question. Do you, When you take girls home, do you let them see this wall? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I live, this is my childhood bedroom. So like I live at- uh, Yeah, I know, we, we, <laughs> we know. <It's> not, <laughs> oh yeah, okay. It's not like I'm bringing that many girls home <laughs> these days anyway. Right, so let me ask you, how many bottle caps do you have left to collect before you can get the Louisville <laughs> Slugger? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, he's cute, you know, because you, you're very sophisticated. 
How like old are you, Noah? Your body and turtleneck are very sophisticated, but your your wall is very Boy Scout. Yeah, I like this. I, I'm I'm 22, but I live in a 12 year old's bedroom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so Noah, how can we help you? Because I feel like oh, I think we could solve it actually. <laughs> uh, wallpaper yeah. or paint, honestly, but definitely get rid of the memorabilia. Put them into a scrapbook. <laughs> right. Okay, so. A few months ago, over the summer, I matched with this girl on Tinder and we, you know, got along and moved it over to Snapchat. You know, we're Snapchatting back and forth, you know, just pictures, basic, basic stuff. But it all just kind of plateaued from there. Like we, we've been kind of flirting and, <laughs> and, and whatnot. But I know this is a very modern problem. It, we've been no, kind of no, yeah, no, I just like that like, you're like, it was sl- slowly escalating. It, it did go from Tinder to Snapchat. But we never got to the TikTok <laughs> phase. We never took it to that next level. We never Google chatted. So what exactly do we do here? I know. That's this that's the thing. I mean, you you would start zoom zoom chatting, you would do, I guess, these days. Cause in, in quarantine. Not if I had your wall. Different <laughs> You're right. What do you think happened? I don't know. I mean, I think both of us, our interest levels remain low. But nobody had <laughs> nobody nobody had the balls to take it to the next level. We're <laughs> Wait, why would you take it to the next level if your interest yeah. level was low? It's it's like we've there's since we're in quarantine, we can't really meet up. We can't really do anything. And so nobody. Yeah, nobody's made like. I I hesitate to call it a relationship because we're like snap buddies, I would say. It is not. But there's like this attached. I know it's not a relationship. It's definitely not a relationship. But there's like (laughs) there's attachment, but no substance, you know. And so I'm trying to figure out the best way to break this kind of thing off, because I think after a few months, it's too late to ghost. It's too late to just be like, bye. Do you know what I Um, think you should do? I think you should try to zoom with her. And if she says, and if she doesn't zoom with you, then it's over. Cause then she's like giving you definitive idea that she doesn't, that she's her, that she's confirmed that her interest level is also low. And so if she won't zoom with you, then it's over naturally. And then if she will, you can see if you like her. I was, I thought you were going to say, if she will zoom with you, you can break up with her (laughs) over zoom. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But I do like that idea because you have to take a risk. That's true. I, I think I do need to 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 move it in in one direction or the other because it's been it's been this plateau thing for so long where it's I think it's been almost too long for it to be like the first zooming of like hey so what are your interests like I I, I let this get, it's gotten out of hand and hasn't left the hand at the same point if you know what I mean like it's been honestly since like the summer that we've been just doing like snap snap back and forth and so i feel like it's too long to say like let's break the ice and say okay so what's your what kind of music do you listen nothing to nothing is too long nothing is too long for anything but i will say that my brother and his wife now met i think their first date was watching saved by the bell that they remembered from their childhood over zoom so, like, I do think, like, you could come up with something fun to do over Zoom that's not, like, an interview. Like, hey, do you want to watch? And it can be short. But And then if she says no, then you have your answer. And if she says yes, maybe it would be fun. But I think you guys are both missing, I think, what, correct me if I'm wrong, Noah, uh, it, what Noah's saying, which is he's no longer interested. Yeah. But he feels like he's been snapping with this girl for too long to just stop altogether. He wants out from a relationship that never developed, yes. but doesn't yeah. know how to break something up that's so unimportant, I but see. yet yes. it's just slightly too important to just be like, I'll never talk to you again. Yeah. Because you want to be a good guy. I think, you could fade away. I think you could fade it out a little, like take longer to write back. Like everyone knows what that means. Oh, you're like an expert in that, right, Ricky? <laughs> Literally, you wrote, the, you wrote the song on it. Google Garfunkel. And just do that. That's your advice. Watch the video to Garfunkel Notes Fade Away and then literally follow the advice given in that song. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to find a way out that's not that's not just 
ghosting and not just trying to fade away. Like I need to find a way to broach the conversation. <laughs> I know this is so cowardly. I'm trying to broach the conversation of like, so let's actually talk about what we've got going here. Oh, you're, you're, you're trying to have a state of the union address in the hopes that she will also say, she'll say, you know what, this isn't going anywhere and you won't have to do the work of actually the uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I kind of think Ricky's right that if you just start slowly receding rather than stopping, you just start, you take two weeks to write back and then you take three weeks to write back and then eventually this will fade away. I used to look, Noah, in my day, these kind of relationships that would take place over AOL Instant Messenger or on GeoCities or on Yahoo Personals. And the same kind of thing would happen. You'd have these long-term relationships with people that you've never met. But the beauty of that is like, you don't really owe them emotional fidelity, exactly. you know, because like there, there's a real world out there. And I think, Ricky, is that kind of what you're saying? Like just a slow receding, not a ghosting, but a, what's it like, what's less than a ghost? What is a ghost? What's a cousin of a ghost? Like a, is it like a, like a ghoul? Yeah. Like a creepy vibe, even a chill. Yeah. That's, yeah. Just yeah. A, just a yeah, spirit. Just, but like also like to get it more into friend level where she doesn't expect to hear. From I like that. Day. Because, yeah, the thing is that the stakes are so low to begin with that I feel like they're like I, I totally could just ghost. I, I could say, I mean, we live like 50 miles apart. It's not like we're, we're not going to meet in person. Oh, I know. I have an idea. Yeah. yeah. Quick and easy. Tell her you met someone. Oh, yeah. I, I might as well make something up. Yeah. Lie. <laughs> that That's a great advice. Lying. That's a great advice. Lie. You say, if you, if you just, why not? It's like the easiest, like, be like, I met, I met someone. And then she'll, then it'll be like, Oh, yeah, I have an yeah. idea. Yeah. I have an idea. Spend the next two weeks trying to meet someone. And right. then it won't be a lie when you tell her you've met someone. And yeah. then also you're too in your head about this, Noah, who cares? Yeah. This isn't even a relationship you care about. You should start putting your energy towards something that's like actually you know, maybe even making a list of what you want in a partner or finding some new partners or, you know, just making, you know, challenging yourself to take some risks with girls or women. I, I, I um think that Ricky is on to something. And I think maybe you could slowly start replacing the pictures behind you with pictures of Chrissy Turlington, <laughs> Christy Turlington. And she's a <laughs> supermodel from the 80s and 90s. And then slowly, and then take a snap of yourself and say, I met someone. And it'll be all photos of Christy Turlington. <laughs> right. And she won't know who it is because she's your age. So she'll assume she's a, a person that you're dating. And you'd just be like, by the way, is that a, pe- does that say Pence? Does that say, it's is there a, a fame, Pence. is there a sports person named yeah, it's, Pence? It's, it's a baseball player. You should write Hunter on there. I would write Hunter Pence. I would write Hunter Pence, the baseball player, yeah, I know, I know. up there if I were you. It's a, it's a poster from the from the All Star the All Star voting campaign. I'm, I'm, trust me, I'm not a Republican. You know what? Just take it down, honey. Right. No, I like. I just think it should it should read Hunter Pence, the baseball player, yeah, not Mike not Pence, the, the vice president. Yeah. Write write all of that. Um. Okay. Well, hopefully we helped you know. You know what I love about you, though. I love. You care so much i love that you don't want to hurt this person's feelings i feel like you're a good guy and i feel like you're definitely going to meet someone who your interest level is higher in and you're going to treat them right like i love that you care Thank enough you. to call in yep. on such a low stakes relationship i think that's really sweet and most people don't put that much thought into it yeah because i feel like since quarantine being single like dating has been almost repurposed where like you can only really uh text with people online it's it's not like, like I'm swiping on Tinder and Bumble and all these places and like saying, you're not really looking for someone to meet up with. So like, cause you can't really meet up with people. So you're really just looking for like a connection of someone to pay attention to you and be attracted to you in, in, mm-hmm. in a kind of basic sense. So like what this kind of Snapchat thing has done for me is basically just like, it's 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 a it's a tiny little endorphin rush of knowing that somebody is paying attention to me uh because you know there's so sure. much isolation these days um but of course at, that at, makes total at this sense point, it's gotten really boring <laughs> yeah <laughs> you just need a new one yeah and the thing is i've 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 mm-hmm. i have been not cycling through but like meeting other girls and snapchatting with them in this in this in this weird way but keeping this but but staying with this 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 first girl 
who I guess I can't seem to get rid of because I, I don't have the balls to do it. Well, I think that makes sense what you're saying. And I think that one of the weird things about the quarantine is the Internet was already slowly creeping. I mean, Ricky, Natasha and I are all of the generation where we didn't have the Internet when we were young, young. And then we slowly w- had the Internet. And you're more of the generation where you've had it your whole yeah. life. Right. Like and when like, I was 22, I didn't have a laptop. I don't think. 22. Right. I don't think so. I think I I don't know. Yeah, but any, at any rate, we didn't have cell phones when we were young, you know, like, so we've slowly, our generation in particular has slowly watched the internet kind of like tangle itself into our lives and like, the, the and we already were feeling the encroachment of the internet, the, the online world and the real world becoming kind of blurred and the quarantine has like rushed those processes forward. For sure. So it's like, there really isn't any more a difference between the internet and real life. Dating, even dating, the most inner per- in-person interface, theoretically, now is just a total digital ethereum. So it's not like, Noah, you're tripping. Why would you care? You don't even know this girl. It's just a Snapchat, buddy. There's something more about that relationship than there would have been five years ago, yeah. especially during the quarantine. So I think that that's fair. She's a real relationship, even though in a bizarre digital frame and you owe her a little bit more than just some random person that you're like chatting with online and a slow receding, I think is an okay thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this, the slow recede might, might be my way to go. You can do like a friend zone. It doesn't have to be totally over. You can chat with her every once in a while. Totally. If you are friends with her. Yeah. It's, but it's, it's almost gone to the, it, it's gone to the point where like, I don't want to say it feels like a chore to constantly respond to her, but it's like it, it's 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 Noah. We get it. You're not into her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Noah, there's never a good time to do a bad thing. You have to do it. You have to figure it out. You have to just put it out there. Yeah. You have to be kind of a not a nice guy, and you have to meet someone else, like Mike Pence yeah. or Hunter Pence. And you need to get a new backdrop. Exactly. You do need to do that. <laughs> we agree. Um, okay, Noah, do you want to ask us something else? Honestly, I'm good. This is what I came on to talk about. And I feel like I have have advanced in my progression of knowing what to do. Good. You're very sweet. <laughs> I hope I hope you I, I agree with Ricky. Steps. You're a you're a nice guy. You're one of the nice guys, and that makes me oh, more concerned. You. But that <laughs> that also makes you more like that's what I wanted from a partner, you know, and that's why I married Moshe. Because he is like that. And I feel like that's like at a premium and people people can tell. And so, you know, I, I think that you have a great relationship in your future because that's such a sought after quality. Well, thank you. Yeah. Best of luck to you, Noah. This quarantine will end soon and you'll get back to being rejected in person. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, you guys. Great to talk later. to you. Bye, Noah. Nice talking Bye. to you, too. Bye. I think that was interesting to me because he's he is experiencing what we're experiencing from a slightly more bird's eye view, which is that a relationship like that, it's simultaneously more than meaningless, but less than meaningful. And so you're like, God, it barely deserves a breakup, but it also would be rude to not break up. Like, how do you manage these digital weird digital relationships? I just feel like everyone kind of knows what's what these days. Like, I, I think if he started to write back to her less, she would turn her interest to someone else. Right. Or turn hers up. Or she'd, ask him, or, she'd ask him, or she'd ask him straight out and then he'd have to tell her. And she'd already know. If you're asking someone, you already know they're not. Did you, Ricky, have you had, or Natasha, have you had those kind of bizarre internet relations? Our interface was weirder because we were le- the, there was less technology, but these relationships where it's like you'd email or... I am back and forth for for a year and never meet the person and then slowly just they li- leave your life and you're like why was I bothering what was did you have any of those No I never have That's have weird No that's weird Marcia. I don't think it's weird I think I <laughs> You well, never met them Yeah I had a lot of different things like that like people that I would I had found in like a, some corner of the internet we were like we were we started flirting but then eventually it was like well this person lives in la and i'm in the bay area or ohio and then we just would sort of keep communicating but there was no sort of end game i had no i think i'm older i'm talking about when i was like 12 13 years old no nothing no 
Oh, no. Uh-uh. Or maybe 15, no. 60. Well, I, I, think, I think we talked and I always had actual Oh, fuck off. We well, <laughs> yeah, I also feel like I, I was definitely never meeting people online. Maybe it's weirder. I don't know. I just feel or like... Or looking for people online. But I also went out all the time. I went out either to a comedy show, to a music event, to a dinner. I'm talking when we were teenagers, young teenagers, not like when we were cool. Well, then I was older than you, and I didn't have the internet. And uh, I, was in I see. High school, You're slightly maybe. older than me, right? Yeah, we had like the AOL dial-up, but it was like charged you by the minute. Like I would not. It had been like making a long-distance call back then. Like I don't think I would have been allowed to have a chat room, buddy. I had a girlfriend. <laughs> I had. That's very patronizing. It was like it was Ricky. like your dad's kind of like internet. No, like they would have charged by the minute, which is why I wouldn't have been allowed. <laughs> not not being no, no. I'm just joking. I I deserve to be patronized too for having. Uh, digital friends before there were even dating apps. No, but I, I feel like I'm not alone in this. I feel like that's a thing. Like right when the internet hit, we were all so enamored of it that we started just going on and being like, who are you? What? Maybe that's just me. We didn't have a home computer. And when I was in college, the first year, I remember having to go to a computer lab. I, uh, I had a girlfriend uh, when I was young, but not a girlfriend. This is, I don't know. I don't know if I've told the story before on this podcast, but it's very funny. Uh, I was like an identity crisis white person that thought he was black. And I got set up with an identity crisis white person that thought she was Mexican. And she she lived in San Francisco and I lived in Oakland. That's not far. It's 15 minute BART ride. And we would call and text and chat on the internet. And then uh, we would dedicate oldies to each other on the oldies station. Like, you know, this one goes out to C- Cecilia in the Mission District in San Francisco. It's Smokey Robinson's Tracks of My Tears. And we would literally call in requests. And we never met. We just It was just like two identity crisis West Side Storyers uh, n- never meeting. And then we I guess we broke up and it just nothing came of it. That's so sweet, though. It's like you're like practicing romance. Yeah. Like, the real thing. Yeah, I think that's right. It's sweet. Um, should we take one more call? Okay, now we're going to call Jamie in Washington D.C. Oh wow, it's a it's a two man day. <laughs> Hello, hi, hi Jamie. Jamie, you're the second man we've spoken to today. I would say our primary advice caller is a 19 year old girl, and <laughs> you're the second handsome young bloke that we've found today. Well, it's so good to be here. Thank you, thank you so much. Really excited about this. It's me, Moshe, and, or it's me, Natasha, uh, my husband, Moshe, and our friend, Ricky Lindholm. Yes. Hi. I'm a big fan. Great, great to meet all of you virtually. Nice meeting you, too. Qu- quick question. You're in D.C. How, how was rushing the Capitol last week? Did you feel <laughs> alive or um, was it crazy for you? Uh, I mean, we were just watching it on TV and like, oh, that's near us. Cool. Um, oh, you weren't there? No, thank God. Um, we, I, uh, I, yeah, not a patriot, I guess. Okay. Uh, Moshe's Moshe's trying to make it seem like like you were uh, one of the rabble rousers. <laughs> that's right, Natasha. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> um. So, Jamie, you're in D.C. You've got an Obama poster at your shoulder. Yep. You are. Uh, what's What do you want to do? Are you in politics? No. Uh. So I am a college senior. Um. And after graduation, I'm going to be a software engineer, uh, and I'm moving to New York. Cool. Cool all life. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. So how can we help you? Um, so I've been uh, in a relationship for two years now um, with my college girlfriend, um, and it's going really, really well. Um, but uh, after graduation, uh, she's planning to move to Los Angeles to try and become a director, um, whereas I'm going to be uh, in New York as a software engineer. So uh, we've been trying to navigate uh, how that's going to work out, um, whether one of us will have to compromise, whether uh, or just what we'll have to do to keep things going. Um, and so I'd love some advice on navigating those conversations or decisions. Um, Let me just pitch real quick that this could be a fantastic romantic comedy that she could direct. You know, I mean, compelling stuff. She's a director. You're a software engineer. This It writes itself, dude. Right, right. Have you guys lived together? We have. Um, so we moved in for last semester. Uh, she took the semester off, um, and I uh, was living in an apartment off campus, and she lived with me for 
three months. Um, wow, this is tough. Because I, I feel like if you guys do go to, I mean, not to be too harsh, but I feel like if you guys go to different cities, it's not going to work out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we've done a lot of long Especially distance. at these, like, but especially if you guys are both at the beginning of your careers. And, and that takes, like, the most energy that you've ever needed. Like, that's what really is hard about uh, being ambitious, you know? And that's why it's very smart sometimes to wait to have a family and wait to have, you know, you want to kind of be traveling light to make your dreams come true. <laughs> if, that's if, true. That's really smart. Or if, if like family is like your main goal, then that's different. And you guys should compromise for each other to build the family that you know that you want to have with her, I, I guess. Yeah. Do you have a job lined up in New York or are you just hoping to get one? I, I have a job lined up. Um, so I start in September. And will you have to go into the office or is it going to be digital? Um, well, they still haven't told us. Um, I, I think uh, the plan is to be going into the office, though. Um, I have a thought. Ricky, what, you look like you have a thought. Do you have a thought? I was just thinking the advantage of the pandemic is everything's on Zoom right now. So like conceivably, one of you guys could try to start your career on the other coast. You know, it's, it's maybe especially her, especially in New York, like if she's getting, you know, but ugh, I don't know. I, I feel. No, you're making a good point, Ricky. It's like it's a funny time to be like, I'm sorry. I just have to go to L.A. to make it as a director. I've got to get out there. It's like, what do you mean out there? There is no out there. You're just going to be sitting in an apartment in, in L.A. Just, why don't you get up three hours earlier and try and do some Zooms from our apartment in New York? But there might be some resentment if one goes to the other place right. and tries to do it on Zoom. So one thing you could do is just say, like, why don't we just, like, do our thing and we'll check in and six months and talk to each other as much as we want because part of it you have to kind of believe is fate in a way you know like are you guys meant to be together or aren't you well i that i think that's really smart and i'm i, I have said on this podcast a lot before i think a lot of the times by the time people call in here not that people really turn to us for like you're my only hope because we are a comedy <laughs> podcast i get it you'd go to a therapist if you had real problems but um <laughs> by the time people call in i would say a high percentage of them kind of somewhere in their gut already knows the answer. They just want to say it out loud and have somebody else kind of acknowledge their reality. And like I'm, the impression I'm getting is that you kind of know that the right thing for both of you to do is to strike out on your own. And that, you know, being with somebody the last two years of college doesn't translate into I'm going to force this to work. We need to go have our own adventures and find what our lives are like. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting from you just in the five minutes I've been talking to you. And I don't think that that's the wrong take. Because there's yeah. a couple things in relationships that are like you just have to have in common, like the city you want to live in. If you want children, there's just a couple things that like they have to be the same. You can't want to live in different places. Like it's there's just like it's only and it's only a few things. And it seems like you want to live in different places. And the problem with uh, do you want to have children is you guys might not know yet. I didn't know I wanted to have children until I was 40. So, you know, that's that's hard, too. And beyond that, like when you're 22, oh wait, how old are you? 22? 22, yeah. Yeah, when you're 22 and getting out of college and she's young, too, it's like, not to say that people don't stay together from that age, because they definitely do. Natasha's best friends got together younger than that, and they've been together forever, but a lot of times it's like, well, I want to go have a life and figure out adventures and make mistakes and not just do the adult choice of being with the person I love, but I want to like go out and fuck my life up and then find out what stories there are there. And I'm going to New York and you're going to LA and maybe we'll reconvene in two years or maybe, maybe we won't. Yeah. yeah. The truth is if you go there and you really, really can't live without her, maybe you'll go to LA. Right. Yeah. Totally. And if you can live without her, you will. Yeah. I think as of now, we're both in it for as long as we can be. Um, but, and we've done a, a decent amount of long distance just over breaks and stuff. But um, we've kind of said, yeah, if we're both moving somewhere with uh, no plans to reconvene, then um, we're not sure uh, what that means. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. That sounds very, very difficult. I can just like feel your heartbreak. I'm, I'm really sorry. This sounds really like very tough yeah it, it is um, but also ricky's right but also it's sad and it's also really kind of exciting that you get to not only do you get to go have adventures but you get to 
uh, allow this woman who you care so much about to not be like emotionally entangled and held back from having the experience that she's supposed to have with her foray into adulthood. And that's what they call, I mean, that is that book I was telling you about the road less traveled. We talked about it before. That's how it describes love actually is love. Actually the greatest film. That's how it <laughs> describes the plot to love. Actually. No, that's what it describes love actually as is, is it's not the feeling you get. It's the desire for that person's well being above everything else you want for the other person, for them to be happy. And that's what you're allowing, I think, for both of yourself. And and the good news is she's going to L.A. And, you know, there's not a lot of people preying on young people moving to L.A. Right. Trying to get get into the entertainment industry. She should so be she fine. She should be fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm faithful. Yeah. Thank, thanks for that. My heart's so much lighter. No, there's no safer place for a young aspirational woman in the <laughs> entertainment industry than the heart, the belly of Los Angeles. It was so for both in the top you had no problem. So, I mean, at least she yeah. just wants to be a director. That's like, I don't know, 12% safer. <laughs> not, it's not safe, but it's just, it's a little better than wanting to be an actress. That's true. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Well, good luck, honey. Yeah. Thank you so much. You seem like a good person and, and, and I'm, I'm actually excited for both your adventures. As sad as the start of the path might be, I think the, uh, the journey will be really fun for both of you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Good luck. Bye. Poor guy. I mean, both of these boys. They were both so cute and sweet. And almost identical. (laughs) I know. I love, there was so much alike, but Jamie had a much better wall. (laughs) (laughs) But it was a little, I gotta be honest, like, they were psychopathic in different ways. (laughs) Right, there was just the one Obama poster. One, that's the only decoration you have is an Obama poster. To but me, it's right where you zoom. You yeah, know, too. To me, it's more, that to me is in a way more concerning than the sports because like <laughs> Noah's was expulsive. You know, you're like, oh my God, what? But then you're like, okay, well, you're sweet. This seems innocent. That, if I walked into a man's house that I was dating and it was just an Obama poster, I'd be like, Oh, you're like pretending you're an okay person. No. Like you're going to carve me up. Like it's just one. That's it. It's just, oh, I love, you know, I love Obama. That's the guy. Can no. you close the blinds and lock that door? You know how bad comedian, like remember when you would go over to young comedians houses, how bad their rooms would be? Like, you know, these are like young DC guys. They don't know right. how to decorate. It wasn't like a poster that they put into some weird frame that it's broken. I'm like that's all they've got. Uh, I just thought of something. You probably have if you live in DC and you're a bachelor, you probably have to like put up some kind of poster or something to let like girls you know you're taking home know that you're like on the right side that's of th- or so on the smart. certain side. Yeah, Trump over your bed or Obama. Yeah. You probably need- there's probably like a signifier, right? Cuz there must be so many like young Republicans moving there. Who do you guys think fucks better in their prime? Obama Trump or Obama? Or- oh, Obama. <laughs> What? I I don't know, dude. You got okay. Look, t- Trump put, is always put been your a ha- dead fuck. Put you your think? hatred for Trump aside. No, he Hold just on. gets women because he has money and is flashy. Think about what he was like in like 1983 when no. he was like doing coke at the uh, at Studio 54. He's got to have some skills, no. right? I don't think so. I have a hard. T- I have a hard time picturing no. him like caring about another person. And I feel like to be a good right, lover, that's you fair. Have to know that other people are human <laughs> no. with needs. No, Obama, you're right. Okay, that's Obama, fair. Obama, the way he looks at Michelle, like, yeah, they he's good. Yeah, you're probably right. Like, probably Wait, right. I am very yeah, like, confused. Yeah. Moshe is implying that Trump has been is good in bed or has been good. I'm in asking bed the time. question. I'm a, a, willing Hell to no. ask the questions that a lot of you liberals won't ask. <laughs> and, and I'm willing to go there. I think you have to know that other people exist as full human beings to be good in bed. You're right, Ricky. You're totally right. Okay, Bill Clinton or Obama? Clinton. In their prime. Clinton. You say Clinton because oh, he's yeah. a freak. He's a freak, right? He likes to do freaky shit. Yeah, and he's got that sexy voice and he probably whispers in your ear and yeah. stuff. Yeah, all right, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Hillary Clinton or Justice Sotomayor? I don't know. I, I, don't, I, <laughs> I don't. Definitely I'm kidding, not I'm Hillary. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I this conversation is no longer productive. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. Interesting. Like a power fuck. I think she's got some darkness. Yeah, because she got Bill. Right. And she's got some darkness. I think there could be some hidden freak underneath there. 
She did get Bill because Bill is like, he was pretty, he seemed like a pretty eligible bachelor. Well, more, yeah, more to the point, she didn't leave Bill. So you're like, what's really going on <laughs> in this family? Like, is she like, yeah, Bill, yeah, the intern, go for it. Or what, like, what, what was really happening? Like, she might have lovers. Like, Sotomayor just seems so, like, balanced and healthy and, like, such a together woman that, like, I'm going, I'm going to go Clinton. Do you want to hear something weird, Ricky, about the Supreme Court that my brother just told me? Uh, Everyone on the Supreme Court is either Jewish or Catholic. And that's been true pretty much exclusively for the last hundred years. Like, wait, I only heard Catholic cut out. I heard I I didn't hear what you said. Say it again. Everyone on the Supreme Court is either Jewish or Catholic. And that's been pretty much exclusively true, like, for a hundred years. And for some weird reason, those are the people that get nominated to the Supreme Court. Why? I don't really know. But it's true. Everyone currently on the the Supreme Court is Jewish or Catholic. Wow. Yeah, I guess that Hmm. makes sense. I'm going through that. Who's who's underrepresented? Protestants, the most populous religious Mm -hmm. denomination in America. But, you know, I mean, obviously Muslims and Hindus and stuff like that, too. But you're kind of like, okay, well, I understand why that that access hasn't been granted. But Protestants, they run they run the country. Yeah. Maybe they can't be bothered. I get they can't be bothered. But (laughs) I mean, I'm sure they could be bothered. (laughs) Isn't that weird? That is so bizarre. It probably takes. Who's the new woman? I'm forgetting her name. What's the new lady? She's Catholic. Uh, Yeah. Well, yeah, she's very Catholic. What's her name? Coney Barrett. No, oh, that's Amy the. Coney oh Barrett. no, that's, that's wrong. Right. Wait, is that her? Yeah. Okay, Amy I Coney thought for Barrett. a second I was referencing Kavanaugh's accuser, and I was like, <laughs> no, 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 I shouldn't. Ghislaine. That was that's yeah. who got on the. Ghislaine Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> I wish her the best. Hey, honestly, I wish her the best. Um. Well, Ricky, that was so great. I really think you helped them, and you are very good. And at I have advice. to say, as a woman, this this episode kind of made me excited to see like how su- I, I, how sweet these boys are. Yeah. These are like, like attractive, nice guys who are like looking for real love and treating women like people. It seems hopeful. It does seem like maybe the era of like the toxic barbarian is a little over, you know, that would be nice. Like I think the, not over, obviously they still exist, but I feel like as the dominant culture, I also feel like the era of like the meek, like beta nerd is over. Like, I think that coming into the next era is, uh, the kind of like masculine good man. Mm -hmm. I think that's the next, hopefully the next, the the next version. Yeah. But just like, but just like I felt when Trump got elected, I said, I think to Kumail, I was like, Oh, this is the end of the like nerd Mm. as a cultural, like I, yeah, I'm proud. I'm a nerd and I'm proud. I it was like that. This is a, a blowback to that. And like, I think that like masculinity in a way that doesn't feel like, you know, like toxic is kind of mm. like what's next. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. You know, like a lumberjack who can write you poetry. Oh, that would be nice. Well, it, it what it comes from is sensitivity and considering someone else, you right. know, and I think that men instinctually can sometimes be a little off putting because they're so filled to the brim with their um uh testosterone well also with the so with the s- social construct uh, construction uh, and programming that says that their needs are so important it's very easy like i i started to realize thinking about this stuff in the last year that men and women are locked into the same cycle often it's like men are the aggressors in the cycle but women are also dancing the dance where it's like men's need paramount men's sexuality is about getting women's sexuality is about allowing you know it's like everybody's kind of locked in this yeah and it just feels like everybody's kind of locked in this same like oppressive stupid dance and i sort of feel like Mm. young people are kind of deprogramming a little bit that's cool that is do you think (laughs) yeah because even like the other night we were talking about like you know i i always feel weird like initiating a kiss you know because like i just feel like my whole life i was like oh i'm going to be pursued because i am a woman and so i'm not going to pursue men but you know maybe that that's just like 
something that actually was literally in, my mother told me. Oh, right. really? She, yeah, like she was like, you are not to call boys. You are not to like... Really? She told you that? It was definitely on that. That was my programming. Yeah. And I was always told that like the guy has to like you more. That, wow. Like, well, that it's, it's... They have to like you more than you like them or it's not going to work. That is crazy. Why would you even want that? <laughs> Why would you want someone that you don't like as much? <laughs> they said like they'll, they're like, they'll, they'll leave. But it is interesting also seeing the 22 year olds ask for advice because they're, they're so innocent. Like they have yet to date a sociopath. They've yet, you know, they haven't been through the cycle. Like <laughs> <laughs> we're like, why are they so great? When you date in, your 40s, yeah, in your 40s, anyone you date has already dated a sociopath. They've already dated. Like they've already been through like so much pain that it is like a nicer level. Of, there's a nicer baseline now than when I was in my You're 20s. You're totally like, right. Like everyone's been through it. <laughs> And it's just like, they don't want it. They don't want to go through it anymore. They just want to like see if well, it's going to work and then, or not. That's what I think. That's totally, tr- that's totally true and, and, and fascinating. And also when you are the first time you do date a sociopath, your experience level is so low. You're not aware of what's happening and you're like, oh, are people just, is this lo- normal? Is this how you're supposed to be treated? And then it takes you a long time to go, oh, no, wait, this is abusive. I gotta and let's go. not forget that sociopaths are highly intelligent and can figure out how to manipulate you. So when I've dated them when I was really young, they would start like messing with my head. Right. You know, and then they start degrading your confidence. And then you don't know like which way is up or what you're doing. And then you get like attached to them. And, and before some, like... you know it, you're married to them and you're in their trailer. <laughs> in the Mendocino Forest. Maybe post-sociopath is a different world. And I would argue maybe a better world. You're before. totally right. Because you're so like vulnerable to this stuff. And then afterwards you do, it is kind of, you are kind of harder, but you're also like, you don't waste your time on garbage. Well, know. that's why sometimes I, I totally think that's true. That's why sometimes I do think there's some wisdom. It's not for me, but there's some wisdom to this idea where it's like, no, you should just marry the first person you fall for. Mm. Because like, there's so much more uh, innocence and lack of callousness there Mm -hmm. that it's like if you haven't fucked 50 people 100 people then you're not going to go like well this sex is boring ever you're going to be like this is sex wow (laughs) cool i love sex you know (laughs) and emotionally that's sort of true let's not forget sociopaths can fuck yeah they can and they (laughs) they have motorhomes i know have you guys ever dated a sociopath where you found out like in one day that they were like in one moment where they were like, they just like flipped everything on you. I had that happen once and I was like, what? And they just like were a different person. What happened? Um, they, he just like went out for a cup of coffee, came home and was a different human with like a different reality. And I was like, what? wow. Like I didn't know what was going, like I didn't know what was going on. How do you interpret that? Do you think like a, like he was a monster the whole time or that he had a psychic break on the walk? I'm not sure. I think a monster the whole time. I think he just like, uh, you know, was like playing relationship and then was right. like, hey, I'm done playing relationship. Now I'm going to be this thing. And then it was like, and like, Ooh. then was like totally over our whole thing. The second that happened, like the second it switched, he was like onto a new life oh. and like never thought about me again. I believe that. Truly scary. That is so scary. I mean, in a weird way, it's kind of like the idea, like he did you a favor letting you know who he really was. Oh, totally. In a way, it was the easiest breakup because it was like, whoa, this man's a monster. And so I never wanted him back. You're like better that than him going for a walk one day, 10 years into your marriage and coming back and being like, I'm going to kill you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Well, I I feel very hopeful for this new generation because I do think that the programming is part of it, too. (laughs) I think that, you know, just thinking that you can ask out a guy or if you're a guy you can be more sensitive and really you know show show that i don't know yeah they did seem sweet it's two it's a two-man kind of day um i can't wait to see your broadway show ricky whatever it is for probably in four years but that's okay also it's like broadway like huh what is your prediction? What happens? Do, is there any? Have you? Do you have any information? Like, how is Broadway going to stay? God, I miss stay... going to shows. But people aren't going to be going until summer, right? No, I, I'm I'm writing it in my apartment. Like, I have. They're not letting me know. I have no idea. <laughs> they're not awaiting the arrival of the musical. 
No, I know. I'm just trying to think like, oh, even it's like from your brain, like, what do you think? It's going to be years. Those seats are so close together. Those theaters are so. Oh, my cool. God. Imagine that. Imagine being in a comedy in a in an old school Vaudeville Broadway theater. It's just like. Coughing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's everyone's oh. shoulders are touching both sides of someone. Like, oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Their solutions are not going to be good for performing, which are spacing out seats. And right. you really want them crammed together because that. And walls is... between the performer and the audience. <laughs> Literally the fourth wall. Yeah sucks well you know what maybe they'll also turn your musical into a movie i should have invested in flex class that was the biggest mistake I did. we all we, look look we're all kicking ourselves for not investing in plexiglass that's all we've all been thinking about this year. um well ricky i feel like we've kept you long enough these are your prime working hours i know so uh thank you for joining us i love you i, I think I you had to see you in person i love you too hope to see you soon Okay, we'll see you for tea very soon. Okay, thanks, Ricky. Bye. Well, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. I know you're feeling excited about the future, man, but I think I'm doing pretty good for the past, man. You are. And the reason that I am doing so well? Yeah. Because I found somebody who I love. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you. Uh, I love you, too? I was trying to take the lead. Oh, go for it. I love you. Do it a little more aggressive. I love you. Oh, well, I love you too.